biography. And it's about Pablo Hassel. And Pablo Hassel, and I'm probably mispronouncing his name, is a Catalonian rapper. He's a musician in the Catalan region of Spain, which has always been politically contentious. And I'll get a little bit into the history of that region. But first, let's talk about Pablo and let's talk about the protests that are currently happening. Uh, the last three nights uh, in Catalonia, there have been protests and riots demanding the release of Pablo Hassel. Pablo is a rapper, and uh, in his songs, in his hip-hop, in his lyrics, he talks a lot about Catalonian independence. So he's a political rapper, but uh, ironically is being, has been arrested and charged with terrorism and sedition. Now, this is ironic for those of us who live in North America because we're used to listening to hip hop and rap that is really violent, that talks about drug dealing, that talks about gangs, that talks about how life is difficult growing up, uh, you know, in urban neighborhoods, in the projects. And so what's fascinating here is the contrast between how hip hop is treated in the United States and how hip hop is treated in Spain. You know, uh, thousands, I'm going to read a little bit from this article. Thousands of people have taken to the streets in Spain overnight in support of a jailed rapper. There were clashes in Barcelona as police tried to disperse the protesters. Pablo Hassel was taken to prison on Tuesday after barricading himself in a university to avoid arrest. He faces nine months in prison for glorifying terrorism and slandering the crown and state institutions over tweets and song lyrics. Demonstrations were reported in cities across the Catalonia region and in the eastern city of Valencia on Tuesday night, hours after Hassel began serving his sentence. In Barcelona, around 2,000 people joined protests and waved placards reading Free Pablo. Some violence was later reported as police moved in and demonstrators set rubbish bins alight. The biggest demonstration involved 5,000 people in the city of Girona, while hundreds more gathered in Lerida, where the rapper was arrested earlier in the day. Another 2,000 people called for Hassel's release in his hometown of Segria. So that was three nights ago. And then uh, two nights ago, I'll bring up this tweet. It was another night of turmoil in Barcelona and other major Catalan towns to demand the release of Pablo Hassel. Let's uh, play this little video here. The center of Barcelona has turned into a battleground as the second night of protest against the imprisonment of rapper Pablo Hassel has descended into turmoil again. The march started in Passeig de Gracia and protesters marched down the avenue until Urquina Ona Square and that's when the clashes between uh, police and protesters started. They set barricades on fire, as, as you can see. Uh, they also threw stones at police vans and police responded by uh, running into crowds with their police vans and firing um, foam bullets. Actually, yesterday, uh, in the first night of protest, a woman lost her eye um, after a uh, foam bullet impacted on her on her eye. Um, in the, the protests in, in the towns of Lleida and Girona have uh, also descended into altercations tonight. And um, the, the reason why this is happening is because the rapper Pablo Hassel was, in, was sent to prison yesterday after being detained in the University of, Ye of Lleida, where he barricaded himself with some of his supporters uh, to resist uh, his arrest. And he's facing a two year uh, and nine and nine month prison sentence for glorification of terrorism and slander of the Spanish monarchy for his tweets and also some of his songs. For more details on Pablo Hassel's case, as well as the latest updates, uh, check um, make, make sure to check uh, catalannews.com. Now. That's hilarious, right? And I mean, hilarious in the sense of tragic, that one of the charges that Pablo Hassel is facing is insulting the crown, right? And let me just take a moment to tell the Queen of England, who's also the Queen of Canada, that she can go fuck herself and she does not have the merit or the qualities to be our sovereign. So I just insulted the crown. And if I was in Spain, 
I could be imprisoned, right? I could literally be arrested and imprisoned for what I just did, for insulting the queen, insulting the crown. That's one of the charges that, that Pablo is being charged with. But allow me to also point out, when have we seen in the United States people rioting to free a rapper? Right? I mean, 6 9 was, uh, Takeshi 6 9 was arrested. I didn't see any protests or rioting queens. You know, rappers have been arrested all sorts of times. There's never been protests, there's never been rappers. So, big shout out to the Catalonians who, when one of their artists, one of their rappers is arrested, they turn to the streets and demand justice. So here's a more news that riot broke out for the third evening in a row in Barcelona. That's last night. So three nights in a row, people have been rioting uh, to demand the release of this hip hop artist, of this rapper. Let's just watch this brief clip here. I mean, again, what they're trying to do here is basically set up a barricade to prevent police from advancing, in this case, a fire barricade. For anyone who spent time in Barcelona, uh, it's got a really interesting grid structure that in this case makes it easy for protesters to kind of prevent police from being able to advance to the areas in which they're occupying. But again, you gotta ask yourself, how often in the United States do people protest to demand the release of a rapper, right? To defend the rights of that rapper to communicate and express themselves and, and that is really what, what makes this story particularly interesting. I also noticed here an interesting contrast that the police have detained the singer Pablo Hassel in a university in Catalonia, condemned by the Spanish justice for insults to the crown. Meanwhile, hundreds of neo-Nazis freely celebrate in Madrid in an act in favor of fascism and against Jews, against anti-Semitism. And, and this is kind of one of the, the contradictions that gets into the, the way in which uh, these current protests in Catalonia are playing out. And, and I, I want to just take a moment to thank Ziasun for, for the follow. Thank you very much. Uh, but I, I want to take a moment to get into some of the background of, around why these protests are, are taking place. Catalonia is a region within Spain that has always had a contentious relationship with the Spanish crown. In fact, the Spanish Civil War, which happened, started in the 30s, uh, uh, lasted for a number of years until the fascists won. I mean, it, it, the reason the Spanish Civil War ended was because Nazi Germany and Mussolini's Italy both helped uh, Spain's Franco to defeat the Catalonians, to defeat uh, uh, the socialists and anarchists in Catalonia who had rebelled against the Spanish crown. So this is very much a, uh, a process in which history is kind of repeating itself. Because the Spanish Civil War was never really resolved. The, the Franco-fascist dictatorship, you know, the only reason it ended was because Franco himself died of old age. Right. There was never a kind of, you know, democratic revolution. There was never a truth and reconcili truth and reconciliation commission. There's never been healing in Spain. And what I, I went to Spain twice in the last five years, uh, both times at the invitation of the Catalonian government and, and an invitation from some of the people in Catalonian industry. So they taught me a lot about the history of Catalonia. It's why one of our uh, one of our pastures here on the farm is actually named Catalonia because we wanted to honor uh, the struggle and the politics that's happening in, in Catalan. And what's interesting is that because this battle has never been resolved, there, there's always ongoing tension. So, for example, the Catalan government had a referendum a few years ago in which even though that referendum had issues of integrity, it overwhelmingly voted in favor of independence. As a result, the Spanish government uh, dissolved the Catalonian regional government. They arrested the leaders of Catalonian political parties. And the former president of the Catalonian regional government currently lives in exile in Brussels. He was elected a member of European Parliament, so he sits in the European Parliament, but he can't return to Spain out of fear of being arrested and, and tried for sedition. 
So we take for granted that our democracy here in North America or in other countries in Europe sort of allow for dissent, allow for protest. But right now in Spain, if you're a rapper and if you start rapping about Catalonian independence or if you start dissing the, the crown, you will be arrested. You will be put in jail. And that's why these protests are so political. It, it's not just to support Pablo Hassel. It, it's not just to support one rapper's freedom of speech, but it, it's also around Catalonian independence and larger Catalonian politics. So this is our headline for today in, in terms of our, our really structuring and framing the, the why we should be looking at not just Catalonian independence, but the way in which social media and, and, and culture in the form of hip hop is playing a very important role in their politics in general. So allow me to take a moment and welcome our friends from Electrical Longboard and the ELB Network. You've always got a home here on MetaViews. And uh, Lucent, when I have an opportunity, I will grant both you and Mupod moderator status so that uh, uh, when we do have a troll come in and, and try to talk shit, uh, you guys are able to intervene because it's difficult for me to do uh, two things at the same time. But I think this is an interesting issue and it makes sense that we might start to attract some trolls because there are a lot of uh, Spanish nationalists who really feel that the Catalonians are trying to rip apart their country. So this is a very political issue and, and I'm glad that we attract that kind of debate. You know, Mupod points out that this issue sounds a lot like censorship and propaganda, the way in which the Spanish government is trying to monopolize the media. But the irony is that in the era of social media, they can't, right? In the era of social media, there's no way the Spanish government can silence the Catalonian people or Catalan rappers. I mean, they have to actually jail them to shut them up. And I think that's why this is going to be an issue moving forward that we're going to have to 